So let's take a look at some different properties of matrix operations. And again, there's a whole list of different properties that are in the textbook. I'll let you take a look at them individually one by one. But suppose I've got two matrices. Let's say matrix A has entries 2, 3, 5, 4, negative 1, 0. So this has two rows and three columns. Matrix B, I'm going to make the same size. All right, so there's matrix A and matrix B. If you switch the order of these two matrices and add them together, it doesn't change the answer because in each location, like let's say you're in row one, column one, instead of adding two plus four, you would add four plus two. Well, okay, you're still going to get six either way because addition is commutative. So the commutative property works for addition of matrices. You can also group them together, right? You can group A plus B and then add a third matrix to it or add B plus C and then add A. It doesn't matter. If you multiply a scalar times a matrix, you could put this, if you multiply two scalars, you could switch the order of the two scalars. It doesn't make a difference. So there are all different properties of matrices that will hold. And there's also some that won't hold. Naturally, the ones we're going to mostly look at today are the ones that don't hold. There are such things as a zero matrix, right? And you might see these represented in a couple of different ways. If somebody writes zero, two, that's not the symbol for two parts of oxygen. That's saying you want a two by two matrix of zeros. So zero, 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 right? Two rows, two columns. Sometimes you'll see something like this, zero, four, two. So this is one where you want four rows and two columns of zeros. Sometimes you got to use a little common sense. Probably they're not going to be looking for the 42 by 42 zero matrix. At least you hope you're not going to have to write it all out. Um, and the other thing is that suppose you take a matrix and you add the opposite of that matrix to it. What are you going to end up with? You're going to end up with the zero matrix of whatever size matrix A is. Right? So if matrix A is a four by five, then you're going to end up with a four by five zero matrix. Right? If you multiply a matrix of zeros by some scalar, you're still going to end up with a matrix of zeros. The other thing that's sort of interesting is the identity matrix. And I sort of hinted at that before. Multiplying a matrix by the identity matrix of the same size returns the matrix that you already had. So, for example, if I have, let's say, I sub 2, because the identity matrix is a square matrix. The 2 by 2 identity matrix has 1s running down the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. The 3 by 3 identity matrix, again, has 1s running down the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So that's the 3 by 3 identity matrix. Right? If you multiply a 3 by 3 matrix by the identity matrix, it returns the same matrix again. So it's a square matrix such that if you take the identity matrix times matrix A, that's the same thing as taking matrix A times the identity matrix, and it returns the original matrix. All right, so what are things then that don't work? Right, Because we, we know that addition is commutative. We can switch that order around. It doesn't matter. So what things don't work in, in matrix terms? Well, the first thing is commutative rules. So let's say I've got matrix A that is 1, 3, 4, 6. And I've got matrix B that is 5, 2, Eight, negative one. All right, suppose I multiply matrix A times matrix B. So row one by column one, one times five plus three times eight, so 24 plus five, 29. Row one by column two, so one times two, three times negative one gives me negative one. All right, we're done with row one. Let's look at row two. Four times five is 20, six times eight is 48. So, all right, I got a 68 in the bottom left corner here. <laughs> 4 times 2 is 8, minus 6 is 2. So there's your matrix AB. What about matrix BA? Right? We know when we multiply two numbers, it doesn't matter the order. What if I change the order of the matrices? Well, let's write them in that order. 5, 2, 8, negative 1, 1, 3, 4, 6. All right, so 5 times 1 is 5. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. Huh. 
If I do the next one, I'll get 15 plus 12, 27. Down the bottom, 8 minus 4 is 4. And 24 minus 6 is 18. All right, so clearly, multiplying matrix AB is not the same as multiplying B times A. So in the world of matrices, multiplication is not commutative. It matters what order you multiply those matrices in. Could you figure out some matrices where they actually do work? Yes, but it's not a general rule. The commutative property does not hold for matrices. It matters what order you multiply them in. All right. Another thing that does not apply to matrices is what we call cancellation. You might think of it as dividing. In terms of numbers, if I have A, B, and A, C, assuming A is not zero, I can quote unquote cancel the A from both sides and find out that B equals C. So I could divide both sides of an equation by seven and it doesn't change the value of the equation. Well, how about in terms of matrices? Huh, well, let's try a couple out. Let, let's say matrix A is the matrix 0, 1, 0, 2. And matrix B is the matrix 1, 1, 3, 4. Matrix C is the matrix 2, 5, 3, 4. Let's take a look at matrix A times matrix B. This should be relatively easy because of the zero. So I get zero times one plus one times three is three. Zero times one plus one times four is four. Down the bottom, I get a six and I get an eight. So there's matrix AB. I right, have about matrix A times matrix C. Well, again, I'm gonna get zero times two plus one times three is three. I'll get zero times five plus one times four is four. Zero times two plus two times three is six. Zero times five plus two times four is eight. And I end up with the same matrix. Now, what is the rule that we usually use say? That if A times B is, a t is equal to A times C, then B must equal C. But clearly that's not the case here, right? I've multiplied two matrices. I've got an A, B, and an A, C. This matrix and that matrix are equal, even though matrix B is not equal to matrix C, right? So this is true, even though matrix B is not equal to matrix C. So cancellation doesn't work. Just because two matrices multiply to be the same thing doesn't mean that there's a matrix in common between them, okay? So cancellation doesn't work. How about zero product property? Zero product property for numbers says that if AX equals zero, then either A is equal to zero or X is equal to zero. In other words, you can't multiply two things and get zero if at least one of them is not zero. How about in the world of matrices? So suppose I multiply two matrices. I'm going to steal one of them from up top there, 0, 1, 0, 2, and I'm going to multiply that by 3, 7, 0, 0. All right. Obviously, I chose this one to illustrate a point. Let's call this matrix A and that matrix D. 0 times 3 plus 1 times 0 is 0. 0 times 7 plus 1 times 0 is 0. On the bottom, 0 times 3 and 2 times 0 is 0. 0 times 7 and 2 times 0 is 0. So here, I've got the zero matrix, even though A and D, neither of them are the zero matrix. So somehow I'm able to multiply two things together and get zero, even though neither of them is zero. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other types of matrices that show up in here. One of them is what we call the transpose of a matrix. So for the transpose of a matrix, you're gonna switch rows and columns. So suppose I have matrix A as four, seven, three, one. 
the transpose of the matrix, which I make a little note like that, means that instead of 4, 7 being the first row across, 4, 7 is now the first column. And instead of 3, 1 being the second row, 3, 1 is now the second column. You realize if I transpose the transpose, I get back to my original matrix. Now, how does this work then with multiplication? So let's keep that matrix A. All right, let's hang on to matrix A as 4, 7, 3, 1. And matrix B, I will call 6, negative 2, 8, 1. So if I multiply those two matrices together, matrix AB is going to be 24, right? 4 times 6 is 24. 7 times 8 is 56. If I add those two together, I get an 80 in the top left. Now let's do row 1 by column 2. So I get negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. Down the bottom, 18 plus 8 is 26. And negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So there's matrix AB. All right, let's transpose both of them and see what happens. So A transpose is going to be 4, 7 down the first column and 3, 1 down the second column. B transpose will be 6, negative 2 down the first column, 8, 1 down the second column. Now, what happens if I multiply those together? I get A transpose b transpose multiply that 4 times 6 is 24 24 minus 6 is 18 all right so that doesn't match any of the entries in the blue one on top interesting 4 times 8 is 32 32 plus 3 is 35 42 minus 2 is 40 and 56 plus 1 is 57 so it looks like i can't just take the matrix a b and transpose it to get A transpose B transpose. What happens if I took the order of these two things and switched them around? So instead of doing A transpose B transpose, I did B transpose A transpose. Okay, I'm going to write them out down the bottom here. B transpose is 6, 8, negative 2, 1. And then I'm going to multiply that by 4, 3, 7, 1. So it helps me to keep the order there. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 plus 56. Oh, I've seen that before. Oh, yeah, up there. I end up with an 80. Do the row, row 1 times column 2. So 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 8 is 26. Down the bottom, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Plus 7 is negative 1. And then negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. All right, so these are the same numbers as AB. It's just that I've transposed it. So if I want to get back the same thing, I should take AB and transpose it. So if I take AB and transpose the product, then what do I have? The 80 and the 26 become the first row across. And the negative 1, negative 5 becomes the second row. And it turns out it actually does work that way in theorem terms. In other words, if I want the product AB transpose, then I can take the product of B transpose times A transpose. And it gives me the same thing. All right, let's look at one other type of matrix. And that'll be the end for this section. And that is the type of matrix called the symmetric matrix. All right, a symmetric matrix, first of all, has to be square. You can't have a symmetric matrix that's not square. If the matrix equals its own transpose, so if the matrix is equal to its own transpose, then the matrix is what we call a symmetric matrix. And sometimes you'll find theorems that apply specifically to a symmetric matrix. That's why it's important to know what one is. All right, so let's take a look at this matrix. Matrix A is 
the matrix four, three, seven, three, four, two, seven, two, zero. Take a look at this. The first row across is the same as the first column. The second row across is the same as the second column. Third row across is the same as the third column. So because the matrix equals its own transpose, matrix A is symmetric. All right, symmetric matrices appear every once in a while, even in places where you don't have square matrices. So let's take a look at this case. Suppose I've got matrix A as 1, 3, 2, 4, negative 1, 0. All right, what's the transpose of A? A transpose, then, is 1, 3, 2, 4, negative 1, 0, except instead of going down the rows, it's going down the columns. Suppose I want to take the two of these and multiply them together. Well, matrix A has two rows and three columns. A transpose has three rows and two columns. Okay, so it means that I can multiply them because the inside two numbers are the same. Let's try it. Let's take A times A transpose. All right, we know the answer is going to be a two by two. So one times one is one. Three times three is nine. Two times two is four. So 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 4 is 14. I'll try to do this in my head. 4 minus 3 is 1, plus 0. Down the bottom, 4 times 4 is 16, minus 3. Uh, no, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 3 is 1. Okay, now 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Hey, this thing over here is a symmetric matrix. All right, so when I take the matrix and multiply it by its transpose, it will produce a symmetric matrix. So 14, 1, instead of being the first row, is also the first column. 1, 17 is the second row, but it's also the second column. So it turns out when you multiply a matrix times its transpose, you will get a symmetric matrix.